acting like your children are not going to have sex is the stupidest thing you could do. These kids is having sex at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. As a black woman who has been trauma dumped on for the majority of my life, you almost don't even realize when it's happening because it's happened to you so much. Nama, you were right. Um, I can see, I can see how you would assume or how one would assume that a girl from the DMV may not be attracted to them because of the way that we just are just naturally. And again, the, the only term I can think of is hard. Like The older I get and the more I, I talk to men, interact with men and, and, and date and get to know folks, the more this becomes truer and truer. Men have one of three vices. Drugs alcohol women. Sugar Miss Amarachi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that post notification button on my channel so you can get notified every time I post a video. As y'all can tell from the title today, we are going to be talking about episode five of Love is Blind DC. As y'all always know, I got my notebook with my notes. So we're gonna get into it. Um, so this episode, we saw the six couples, which I will say I was right. Pat myself on the back. Because in my initial cash review episode, I said I felt like it was going to be five or six couples that made it. And we did, in fact, in fact have six couples. Pat myself on the back. Um, thank God we didn't have seven, which we'll get into that couple. But um, I was right. So we see, like, the remaining couples get engaged and then they head off to Cabo San Lucas which I love because I just got back from Cabo a few months ago like a month ago beautiful place definitely um, recommend um so we see their like first night slash day in or two days in Cabo before I talk about the honeymoon first night second day thing I want to revisit something that I had mentioned earlier that I keep seeing and again I really want to harp on this the only Couple reveal where the girl, in my opinion, was equally as happy to see the dude was Marissa and Ramses. Which honestly surprised me because they was not really giving me much in the house. I mean, in the pods. So to see them both be so excited, like Marissa's smiling from ear to ear. She's smiling, she's happy, she's giggly. Like, it was beautiful to see because even when Brittany met, uh, why, why do I want to call this boy Joe? Leo. It was not giving. When um, Nick and Hannah was revealed, Hannah was not giving. And like, again, it just seems like a lot of these girls are really insecure. Like, they're scared that the dudes do not like them. And I love that these men on, these, on this season, all of them seem to be very, very, besides Leo, reassuring like you saw Tim reassuring uh Alexandra you saw um Tyler reassuring Ashley you saw Garrett reassuring Taylor you saw Ramses reassuring Marissa you saw Nick reassuring Hannah you saw people the women getting reassured 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 and it just seemed like besides Marissa the girls just kept looking for the shoe to drop like it was like they was one foot in one foot out they wasn't really ah uh, like you know what I'm saying so that like again like I said in my previous video I really hope that the girls start to come around it seems like a lot more uh, more of them are starting to come around as we see in the honeymoon um episode or like the latter part of the of episode five when they're in the honeymoon um in, in, in San Lucas and um yeah, so so I just wanted to like again re um revisit that because I, I saw it again and again and again and again with the exception of Marissa. Now I want to talk about Nick and Hannah's reveal real cute, real real quick. Um, Hannah is throwing me off, been throwing me off, and 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 started throwing me off really at the reveal. And then, like, threw me off more at the, by the end of this episode. And so I'm off of her. I'm, I'm off of Hannah. Hannah is somebody who, by her own admission, has struggled with her weight, has struggled with her physical features, has struggled with feeling beautiful in herself. So for you to 
see Nick and start talking about how he don't look like how you want him to look all the while you was hoping for him to accept you for what you look like that's weird that's really weird because again I would think that yes I understand that you in your mind had a idea of what he looked like because he said he was a football player but this boy said he was the kicker he didn't say he was on the def on the on the on D on the D line on the defense line he ain't say he was a, uh, now I don't know much about football, y'all, so I might be saying some of these terms wrong, but he ain't say he was the defensive tackle. I think that's a, I think that's a, a, a position. He ain't say he was the, 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 the people that, that, that make sure that nobody gets past the quarterback. He ain't say he was one of them. That man said he was the kicker. Now, I don't watch football like that. I only done seen a few episodes of football or a few games of football the kicker usually be like the smallest person on the team you're not about to have no big body built dude as a kicker because they have to be able to be like nimble and be able to run and kick it like and they have to be able to like if the if they throw the ball instead of instead of wanting to kick it if they're doing a, I think it's two point conversion they got to be able to catch it and run and you know you're not about to have no big brolic ass dude as no kicker like they, I just have never seen that so for you to think he was finna be this big bodybuilder ass dude like I think that that's weird like girl you set your expectations and now you're looking dumb and you're and you're and you're feeling some type of way because he ain't look like what you expected him to look like but again you was the one talking about how you struggle with your way so how you sitting here trying to down him because he not this big buff buff dude and Nick is not ugly like he's very cute he's a cute kid like he not like, you know, again, he not big. He kind of like, you know, a little medium, smaller build. But it's not like he's, you can see his bones through his, his stomach. Like, I don't know. Like, that, that's, that's, that reveal threw me off. And that those comments threw me off because I just don't understand how you could be struggling with something. But then you're also talking down about somebody, about the thing that you're struggling with. Like, how you gonna talk about somebody's weight and you're somebody who also struggles with your weight or what you look like? So, I don't know. That was like, that threw me off really, 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 really much. Like I said, Ramses and Marissa had the best experience. I was nervous at first when they had their reveal because it gave best friend vibes. It gave, like, friendship. Like, it gave, like, like the kiss kind of was a little awkward, like, but I think that was just because, again, they were so, like, hyper. And, again, this is the first time they're seeing each other. So it's like, we, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Like, you know. But they seem like they're going to have a lot of fun together. And at the end, I'm going to tell you all the couples I think are going to work, maybe work, and will absolutely not work. But I think that Marissa and Ramses are going to have a lot of fun together. And then moving fast forwarding to... Um, the honeymoon to find out that they already had sex. It wasn't even nighttime. They said, "Look, we just got the plane. Let me go ahead and get some little booty. Let me get some." And they was like, "This shit was fantastic. I love it. I love it." Because let me tell you something. We grown. We are grown. Listen to me and listen to me now. We grown. The whole conversation about having sex. That shit is. When you was younger, you ain't had no business talking about that. We grown now. So let's talk about it and let's keep it pushing. Just like how Tyler and Ashley A was like, okay, let's talk about sex right now. We doing it or not? We doing it or not? What's the what's the what's the boundaries? What's the parameters? Marissa and Ramses, they went and did they thing. And Marissa said, look, I'm grown. I'm I'm engaged. I'm grown. I'ma have sex. I'ma have sex. I love it. Because I feel like a lot of times, like, because sex is seen as such a taboo topic. People always get so scared to talk about it. And I be so confused because how do you think you got here? Somebody was hunching. Somebody was hunching. People be hunching, y'all. People be hunching. Like, it's not that serious. It's not that serious. Like, and that's why, again, like, I think that those type of conversations, like, are really shaped by the type of family that you have and the type of upbringing that you have. So I don't really be feeling, I don't really be trying to put nobody down when they get uncomfortable talking about it because like for me my mom been talking to me about hunches since I was younger she look she was like look it's gonna come a time where you're gonna be hunching be safe don't bring me no children out of wedlock don't don't be doing nothing that you don't got no business doing with nobody you don't got no business doing it and yeah like and I was like cool 
end of discussion. It didn't have to be awkward. It wasn't like, ew, we talking about... It was like, look, it's a part of life. You gonna do it one day. Just make sure you're doing it safe and with somebody that you trust. The end. And I appreciate that. And like, again, even like now that I'm 27, like my sisters are 19. They're in college. My mom be talking about the, talking to my sisters about it. My, da my daddy be talking to us about it. Look, y'all are grown. So I can't make the decisions for you, but I just hope that you would use the common sense that we have instilled in you to make the right decisions. The end. You know what I'm saying? Because acting like your children are not going to have sex is the stupidest thing you could do. These kids is having sex at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? So it's best to have a conversation with them earlier versus later on when they don't, when they don't really understand, like, what could have potentially happened or, or, or how things have got, ha could have gotten to where they got. Like, or, you know, when your 11 year old is now pregnant because you were scared to have a conversation about sex with, with them. And now you dealing with a child, potentially about to bring a child into, to, into the world. That be on y'all because y'all don't be having, y'all don't be talking to y'all kids. So yeah, I love that. I love that. Now, last but not least, let's go ahead and get into Leo and Brittany. First of all, on a lighter note, Brittany from Baltimore? Which Baltimore? Wh Baltimore County? Because it can't be the city. It can't be the city. She, she can't be from the do and the two Baltimore. She can't be. She can't be from the, I'm coking, cram, coke, I'm talking, spam, coke, smack. She not from that Baltimore. She can't. She can't be, y'all. Because I don't know no Baltimore city shorties that's going for the okie doke. Baltimore City shorties, I don't know none of them. I ain't never met a Baltimore City shorty that's going for the okie doke that, that Brittany was going for. She got to be from the county. She cannot be from the city. She cannot. That was funny. When I heard uh, some of my Baltimore girl, I said, Baltimore? Oh, she's from Baltimore. She's from Baltimore. She's not from Baltimore. Funny. Unfortunately, though, Brittany fell for the okie doke. Um, she just wanted to be married. I think that's what it is. I think she's gotten to the point where she's just tired of running around with these dudes that spend a lot of money on her and have multiple options, but she also hasn't really healed from that. She just want to be married. And that's what Leo gave her. Leo gave, Leo gave her a bunch of BS, a bunch of ring around a rosy ass, uh, uh, um, what's that thing called? Uh, vows. And she was like, yeah, I would love to be married. But as we saw, halfway through, they went to Miami instead of Cabo because the producer said, look, we know Leo's a psychopath. We know he's a narcissist. We just wanted him for the, for the first few episodes to just keep the drama. But we, ain't invite, we didn't even invite them to Mexico. We didn't even invite them. So they said, go to Miami. They're going to go to Miami. They went to Miami and they broke up. Good, Brittany. I, I'm thankful. I'm so happy that you finally saw the light. Hopefully, because you know, apparently I've, I've watched videos of people from the pods or people from the show talking about the pods, it seems very isolating. It's dark in there. You in a stuffed up room. So hopefully that, that heat from Miami, seeing the waves, seeing all the people, got into Britney's senses that she didn't have no business being with that man. So I'm happy. Britney, take your ass back to Baltimore and find somebody else because the heat Leo wasn't it. What I do want to talk a little bit more about, though, is the meetup. Because that meetup was the weirdest shit ever, and it was also the scariest shit ever. In combination. Combination. First of all, Leo come out, Brittany come out, cool. I'm going to play my reaction, like my live reaction, to some of the things that was happening right now. Why he grabbing her neck like that, y'all? Why he... Why he squeezing her hair, her neck like that? Like it's like she can't get loose. Like, uh, uh. Okay, so y'all saw my live reaction, right? Y'all didn't see my face, but y'all heard my voice, right? First of all, why was that man grabbing her neck like that? I'm talking about this boy said. This man was like this the whole time, bro. She can't even move her neck, bro. She can't even move. This man was pulling her in like, give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. She like, okay, I don't want to give you no kiss, bro. Like, it was giving psycho. It was giving serial killer. Like, why was he grabbing her neck like that? I don't know. That made me very uncomfortable. Like, 
get off of me. Then he just kept pulling her closer. Like, it was like he was almost trying to, like, smother her. Like, then it was really awkward when he kept saying, I love you. I love you. Oh, my gosh. I'm so in love with you. I'm so in love with you. Brittany said, why do you love me? He said, um, well, I love you because of what you could do for me. Red flag. Flag on the... Flag on the play. Flag on the play. If a man ever says to you, I love you because of what you do for me, he don't love you, run for the hills. Run, Forrest, run. Forrest, run. Forget that, actually. If anybody ever says to you, I love you because of what you do for me, run for the hills. Run, Forrest, run. Forrest, run. Forrest, run. Forrest, run. Because what do you mean you love me for what I do for you? That sounds like slavery. That sounds like bondage and captivity. If you can't, again, this experiment actually creates the best scenario and, and situation where you can actually understand why you love somebody, right? Because you can't see them. You don't know what they look like. They can describe all they want to. Like how Hannah said Nick, Nick she thought he was six this and da da da, da. I could tell you anything I want to tell you. I could tell you I'm 400 pounds and I'm a white woman. You would never know what I look like until I appear or if I was to ever appear, right? And so this experiment creates a scenario where you can truly figure out why you love somebody. And if the only thing that they can say about you as to why they love you is because of what you do for them, that's insane. That's insane, bruh. That's literally insane. Fast forward. He asked her, what do you love about me? That girl gonna say, I love you because even though you made me a second choice, you did what you had to do. Oh my gosh. I just, I know that like, to some extent the producers are probably telling them like, we know you don't like this shit, but you gotta go through with it. You can, you can break up after the camera stop rolling, but we need this content. Because if it was me, I'd have been like, yeah, this ain't even going to work. I don't know what to tell y'all, but this ain't it. But she seemed like she just was going with the motions, going with the flow. For me, that we ain't even doing none of that. So that was very weird. It was giving serial killer. I'm telling y'all, it was giving no, no, no. <laughs> Run for the do, do, do. And last but not least. I looked on Ashley A's page and I was trying to figure out because I had a theory or I had a thought in my mind, but I was trying to figure out if Ashley was from the DMV. And I will say, I'm not, I can't confirm this, but I'm like 85% certain that Ashley's from the DMV. I said she was from the DMV in my, in my cast reveal, but I'm like 85%, 85, 90% certain she's from the DMV. The only reason why I'm not 100% certain is because she got a lot of pictures in LA. Like some of her pic, a lot of her, it's like half of her pictures are, are, have the um, location stamp in LA and half of them are location stamped in DC. So I don't know if she's from LA or DC, but I think she's from DC because I looked at her story today as well. And she was on like Fox 5 DC. She was on a TMZ DC show. Like... So on a DC Zone show, so DMV Zone show. So I think she is from the DMV. I think she is from, from the DMV. The reason why I wanted to confirm this, but I am gonna I'm gonna say this because I have a hunch that again she's from the DMV. My best friend one day, she told me, she was like, we were talking about some guy, and she was like, yeah, this guy, he really wanted you, da da and I was like, no, he did And she's like, yes, he did, I know him, he don't be, like, he don't really be wanting to talk to girls like that, but he really was up on you. And I'm like, no. And she's like, do you think he's ugly? I'm like, oh, no, he's fine, but I just don't think he like me. And she's like, no, Amarachi, like, you wasn't really giving him, like, the energy that you were supposed to give him, da 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 And me, me and my best friend were going back and forth arguing because I felt like, my t the way I am, if you don't outright tell me I want you, I'm going to think you don't want me because I'm not going to sit in the song. I'm, I'm not, I don't pick up on cues. I might flirt back with you, but unless you tell me I like you, I want you, I want to go to know you, I want to take, take you on a date, I'm going to assume that you don't because you didn't say it. For me, you got to say it. I'm not assuming nothing because assuming is how you get your feelings hurt. So, anyway, I digress, but my best friend kept telling me, like, 
Amarachi, you, and she's told me this before. She's like, Amarachi, I always, like, whenever we go out, there's always dudes that want to talk to you, but you're, like, so, like, you know, walls up and, like, standoffish and da da, -da. And I'm like, no, like, I be flirting back. I just, again, I don't be, it, it's never giving. <laughs> That's just not how I am. So then her fiance, her now fiance was like, oh, um, because he's also from the DMV, but my best friend's from LA. So he was like, oh no, that's just how girls from the DMV are. Like, that's just how they, that's just how they are. Like, they just, they don't be going for no, none of that, like, okie doke. So they just come off, like, hard. The reason why I'm saying this is because watching Ashley and Tyler in the pool, I was like, it was like a light bulb went off. And I was like, oh, now I see what my best friend was talking about. I see it. Like, I literally, I was like, wow. Like, it was so crazy to watch because in my head, I'm like, Ashley, girl, what are you doing? Like, why are you so, like, you not giving it to Tyler, like, how I feel like you should be giving it. Like, baby, you supposed to be, like, not, again, like, not all up on him, but, like, I don't know. It was, it was giving. She ain't want to, like, really be in a pool with him. She ain't really want to do nothing. But then I was like, bro, like, maybe that is how DMV girls act. Like, maybe we are just, like, we not giving you too much, especially if we know people are watching. Baby, you not finna get nothing from me unless I'm really in it. Like, unless I'm really, like, dialed in. So I just wanted to make that comment because, Nama, you were right. Nama, you were right. Um, I can see, I can see how you would assume or how one would assume that a girl from the DMV may not be attracted to them because of the way that we just are just naturally. And again, the, the only term I can think of is hard. Like, we're just naturally like, huh, like, huh, what's up? Like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So I definitely was like, dang, I need to definitely like, you know, give my best friend her credit. Like, you was right. You was right. Like, it's not giving like Southern Belle. Nah, it's giving what's up. So that was funny. But anyway, yeah, those are my thoughts. Thank you for joining. If you haven't already, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that post notification button so you're notified every time that I drop a video. Tune in tomorrow for the next video. Make sure you watch all the videos I've already posted. And as always, stay blessed, bold, and beautiful. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Miss Amarachi, back with episode 6 review of Love is Blind DC. As you can see, this is just a continuation of the episode 5 video because this video is not that long. If you're new here, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, click that notification button to be notified every time I go live. So, not really much went on this episode, in my opinion. It was an hour, which they've been making these episodes mad long. I ain't had that many notes. I am, however, looking forward to what's coming up because the previews was making me... First and foremost, Alex is getting the ick from Tim. I don't know why he keeps saying this dog comment because she keeps saying she don't like it. And that makes me... That shows me that he liked to push buttons and see how far he could get. And I'm guessing, based on the conversation that we ended off on, Alex called him a bitch. Like, he, it had to be that. He got called out his name. I don't necessarily agree with calling people out of their names, especially, like, your significant other. But I also don't like when people, like, try to poke the bear and see how long they can poke you. And then when you react, they get mad at the reaction. Tim been poking at Alex this whole time. And even though people might say and think it's fun and games, she keeps, like, telling him, I don't like when you say that dog comment. I don't like when you say dog, dog. And he keep finding ways to say it. Like, he was talking about his pet. He's like, yeah, I got a dog. Why are you doing that? Like, I don't like when he would do that. That's you trying to get a reaction out of me. Now, when I react, you're going to be mad at the reaction. And you're going to be crying just and be mad like Tim was. But you ain't think about the actions that took place in order for me to react that way. So Tim better get it together. Um, you can tell that she's still a bit skeptical on him, but she's trying to make it work. And honestly, like, I was thinking about this, and I, I saw a few takes on this, and I'm going to agree with what I've been seeing. Tim is doing a lot of trauma dumping. As a black woman who has been trauma dumped on for the majority of my life, you almost don't even realize when it's happening because it's happened to you so much. 
So, Alex, I hope that you run for the covers because the trauma that I think is going to continue and um, it's not going to end out well for you because he's going to keep giving you the ick. Number two, um, which is like a positive. I know I gave the men a lot of shit at the beginning. Like, they wasn't really doing it for me. But honestly, season, episode six told me that these are the most intellectually sound and emotionally mature men that have, we've seen on Love is Blind as a collective. Individuals here and there, something wrong with y'all. Leo, you're a psychopath and a narcissist, so we're not talking about you. But to see, like, for example, when Nick saw the letter or the, the thing that Hannah left of all the things that were wrong with him, I love the fact that he, like, wanted to have a conversation about that. Like, let's not just... Because to me... It seemed like Hannah, um, to me it seemed like Hannah was trying to like brush past it. But he was like, no, like let's talk about it because this is something that is bothering you because you wrote a four page letter about what you don't like about me. Let's talk about it. That's emotional maturity to me, right? Or like Ramses, um, and I already spoke on Ramses and Bodain, like how emotionally mature they were. Ramses has been very vulnerable, very like open about how he's felt about the whole situation. Bodain, when he was like, when he was let go um, by Marissa, he was very emotionally mature about it. Even Steven, like the emotional maturity that it takes to like be able to, and this is not to say that I agree with his decisions because I don't. But the emotional, maturity, the emotional maturity that it takes to say, I voted for this president. I did this coming from an uneducated mindset. I saw what transpired and I realized that I might not have made the right decision, but I wanted to make a bit better decision. And I did the research and this is why I voted for the next president in this way. That takes a level of maturity that we don't see very often on Love is Blind, in men in general. Um, they're not afraid to articulate their emotions. They're not afraid to have the hard conversations. And I love that because in the past, again, we've seen these little boys that just be just playing games. Like, they just playing little-ass games. And it's like, we're not here to play games. We're here to get married. You with it or not. Now, whether that's going to continue, I don't know. Because these previews, which I'm going to get into, are, 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 are already pissing me off. Number one, I saw Ramses say, this is the last topic. Previews. I saw Ramses say, if I wasn't engaged, I would have sex with you. So did you just come on the show to have sex? Because y'all already told us that you and Marissa started having sex as soon as y'all got to the... Y'all didn't even take a shower after you got off the plate. You said, oh, bags down, let's hunch. So you just here for the sex. I don't like that. Number two, I saw a uh, preview of Tim and Alex. Alex is like, I'm trying to work with you. Like, I'm really, I'm really trying with you, and you're not helping me. So it seems like he's an emotional trauma dumper, and he just shuts off. So you're avoidant. That's what it is. You are avoidant. That's, that's what your, your attachment style is avoidant. That's not good. I need you to be upfront. You don't need to be argumentative, but you need to be, like, open and honest. Let's actually communicate. Let's not, when the going gets tough, we run out. That's what it's giving with Tim, and that's what it seems like it's coming back, coming coming up in the next episodes. Last, and honestly, I don't like to say most importantly, but last and most importantly, because y'all know my favorite couple is Tyler and, a and Ashley. Tyler, do you know how many people are going to cut your dick off? You know how many people are going to be at your house if you fuck with Ashley? Do you know what's coming to you if you, if you... Ashley said, and this was a scene where she was crying with Alexandra, and she said, and I quote, because I wrote it down, because I was so flabbergasted when I heard this. She said, I'm in this scenario to fall in love with a guy who has babies. What do you mean you're in this scenario to fall in love with a guy who has babies? Please, Ashley, please, 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 Netflix, please, please, Kinetic, please, Netflix, please, Love is Black, please, Ashley, please, Tyler, please, Jesus, tell me this is not so. Although we've come. 
to the end of the road. Y'all, Tyler got babies. Tyler has children. And hey, y'all, I don't want to spoil this for nobody. Because it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a show spoiler because I haven't watched no more episodes. But word on the street is Tyler got three kids. <laughs> word on the street is Tyler got three children. <laughs> Jesus. Someone called Jesus on the main line. Why? Why must these men lie every time? Every time it's always something. You know what's so crazy? Somebody once said this to me and I believe this. I, the older I get and the more I, I talk to men and interact with men and, and, and date and get to know folks, the more this becomes truer and truer. Men have one of three vices. Drugs, alcohol, women. I don't know what is in the water. I really don't. I don't know what's in the oxygen that men are breathing. I don't know what is in the upbringing and teachings, but it just doesn't make sense to me how one species of human beings acts this way. Like, why do y'all act this way? I just, I don't understand, like, why men make the decisions that they make. Like, is there a wiring in their brain chemistry? Is there like a uh, a missing something is there a like imbalance in I just I don't understand because time and time again we see these men come on this show and act like they have no sense none Tyler is another example and I just I pray to God I don't know that this is not going to be true because multiple women have come forward but I don't know bro I don't even know what I'm praying I pray for Ashley's mental health that's what I pray for I pray for the women's mental health and sanity and the sanity and mental health of his kids and his baby mamas however many they may be because to know that someone is that manipulative and apparently that abusive and doesn't take care of his kids and goes on a show like this and paints himself to be out to this person and is with this woman who also appears to be the most gentlest and kindest soul known to man and she fine it's just like you have to be a danger you got to be a deranged dangerous type of person to be able to like do that and get away with and try to pull the wool over the eyes of folks let me tell you something i talked to somebody like that yeah, yeah i dated somebody like that 10 out of 10 do not recommend see me i wasn't bound and confined to a wall nor was i bound and confined to the information that they gave me i was able to do my own information and my own research and i realized that he was deranged he was he was deranged he was crazy and i had no business matter of fact he had no business day in nobody he definitely had no business day in my ass and that's why i cut him off as quickly as i started talking to him because i said hmm some of these screws are not all the way screwed so i'ma just walk away before my daddy got to kill you. So, yeah. Um, I just, I, those are my thoughts for episode six. Again, not too long. Um, I'm excited for the remaining episodes. Apparently, the next episode is called Meet the Parents. That's on the knife. So, that'll be this Wednesday. So, looking forward to seeing what that looks like. And, um, yeah, y'all. Drop that in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Yeah, how y'all feeling? And um, I will see y'all in the next episode. Be blessed, bold, and beautiful. Mwah. Thank you.